Welcome to the Dog and Balls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. Tennessee drops to Arkansas 19-14 to in a game where their offense flat out just didn't show up, right? Nico didn't show up. The offensive line didn't show up. The wide receivers, I didn't feel like they showed up. There's a lot we can talk about. There's a lot we can discuss. Uh, we can point fingers. We can point blame. But this football team, look, we said it last night, and it's cliche. It's coach speak. They got to look themselves in the mirror, and they got to decide what they want to do moving forward. Now, we as fans, we're going to be emotional. We're going to overreact. We're going to say the sky is falling. We're going to say this is a 7-5 and five team. This is a 6-6 six and six team. This is still a football team that's done some good things this year. Oh, they didn't play anybody. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. We're going to find out. This team is going to have to find out. I feel like last night, all that said, the offensive struggles, uh, the conservative play calling, has Josh Heupel lost his edge? There's so many things we can talk about with this football game. But the way it played out in the first half, man, even the first drive, Arkansas comes out, they go 16 plays, 74 yards. They eat up over nine minutes a clock, and, and it kind of – it was a Tennessee defense that bent but didn't break, and that's kind of the story of the night, right? That first drive, Arkansas converts a fourth and one. They get down first and goal from the three, but Tennessee digs in. They force a field goal, and that's basically the end of your first half. The first drive is the end of your first half, but that defense gave this offense an opportunity to go win a football game. I'm not saying the defense played perfect. I'm not pl saying they played flawless. Uh, all, all, all respect to Taylor Green. He went out and played the game of his life. But this defense dug in. They got that stop on the first drive. They got a fourth and one stop on the Tennessee 34. They got another fourth and one stop on the Tennessee 20. They got another third and goal stop from the two. It was a fumbled snap, but you were in position to make a play. You did that, and then you only got the football four times. What would you do with it? You punted it three times, and you had a turnover on downs. But the bottom line is you go in that locker room three to nothing at the half with a chance to win, and this defense – gave Tennessee a chance to win all night long, and they just didn't get it done. They didn't get it done on offense. They didn't get it done with play calling. Again, a lot to talk about. Still upset, still frustrated. I don't guess apathy is set in, boys, because this one still stings the next morning. We've had a night to sleep on it, try to push away some emotions. I know a lot of people were mad. A lot of people were emotional last night. They, everybody wants to point a finger at somebody. We've had a night nice to sleep on it. This is the day after we're going to get into it. But as always, I need you guys to do me a favor. Do that YouTube stuff. Smash the thumbs up just below the video. It is quick, free, and easy. It does help this channel. Whether you agree with me or disagree with me, if you like the channel, hit that thumbs up. Also, attack the comment section. I know you guys have a lot you want to get off your chest. So jump into the comment section. We can talk about it. If you don't have anything to say or don't have a question, just put a GBO. We would appreciate it. If it's your first time here, welcome to the Talking Balls Network. We're not experts. We're not insiders. We're not media. This channel is for the fans, by the fans. If you like it, make sure you subscribe. Click that bell for notifications. You won't miss out when we go live or when we drop a video. We'll be live later tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern time. It's a fan call-in show. Probably going to run a little different tonight. Probably going to run a little bit more clean. Bring a couple of you on at a time. Let you voice your opinions because that's what this channel is all about. But let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Tennessee, Arkansas, 19-14 is the final score. You can see the box score on the screen there. The offense is just the biggest concern right now right? The offensive line, the wide receivers, the play calling. We miss Alex Golish. You know, what? what is it? I, I think let's start with Nico. I don't think Nico looked that great last night. I think Nico struggled 17 of 29, 158 yards. I feel like Nico, the last two games against Oklahoma on the road and now against Arkansas on the road, Nico has not felt comfortable. I feel like he's got happy feet. I feel like he, he doesn't have that security. I feel like he doesn't feel like the offensive line is going to protect him. And it's not just the offensive line. It's the tight ends that are struggling in pass protection. It's the running backs that are struggling in pass protection. Yeah, we built Nico up on this channel. Why would you not? He's a five-star quarterback. He was the number one overall player in the country. You expect a guy like, like that to come in and be a baller and be a gamer. And, and when you look at the way this game played out, and Tennessee lets Arkansas, Arkansas score that touchdown late, you know you're getting the football back with a little bit of time. You're thinking, okay, this may have been ugly, may have been sloppy, but now is where Nico goes and gets his. This is where Nico goes and wins a ball game. Because, yes, we were critical of Joe Milton on this channel. I was critical of him. Some of you guys were critical of him. Nico had his opportunity to go win a game, and he didn't. We said multiple times, Joe Milton may not have ever lost you a game, but he didn't win you a game. Now, Nico's a redshirt freshman. He's going to have plenty of opportunities to go back out there and prove himself. 
And I, I think Nico is still going to be a good quarterback. I, I do. I don't think he's going to be defined by a loss to Arkansas on the road. Now, I think a big part of it is, again, pressure. He's been sacked 13 times against Power 4 opponents. So, I get it. Yeah, we've not played anybody. Yeah, Nico looked great against Chattanooga. He looked great against Kent State when there was no pressure. So, is that on Nico? Or is it on the offensive line? Is it on the play calling? Again, we don't get all 22. We can't see the above view of what's going on downfield. But every time I saw a replay and I saw Nico flushed out of the pocket, running for his life, looking downfield, the wide receivers are not creating separation. They are not getting open. Now, is that because they can't beat one-on-ones? They can't beat man-to-man coverage? A lot of talk about the play calling right now. And I agree, it's conservative. It's vanilla. It's basic. I'm waiting on on Coach Heibel to open something up, mix things up, take shots, get creative. I think the biggest thing for me, I don't sit here and pretend to be an X's and O's guy. I always say for the fans, by the fans. I'm not, I'm not some expert or insider, but I think the the obvious thing on the page here is get Nico involved in the run game. If you've got wide receivers that can't create separation. And I think if you look at the two drives where Tennessee did score, they got the ball out quick to brew, let him make plays, got the ball out quick to squirrel, let him make plays. And I know that's not creative, but it is part of this offense. It is part of spreading them out. And then it opens up the run game for Dylan Sampson, who, by the way, he may have struggled in pass protection. Dylan Sampson's a dude. He's an absolute dude. 22 carries, 138 yards, two touchdowns, average 6.3 yards per carry. So it wasn't all bad. But I think if you get Nico involved in the run game, particularly early, you know, Kirk Herbstreet brought it up on the broadcast. Coach Rice brought it up last night in the postgame show. Tennessee couldn't run against the light box. Let Nico keep some. Give him some designed runs. I don't know if we saw a single designed run for Nico all night last night. So we can discuss it in the comments. We can argue about it. We can debate it. The bottom line is the offense as a whole was not very good. Offensive line, wide receivers, play calling. Do we miss Alex Golish? Maybe we do. Nico wasn't great. It's a combination of those things. And it's got to get better, and it's got to get better in a hurry. But look, the thing that bothered me the most was Nico running out of bounds with zeros on the clock. Because we ate Joe Milton alive on this channel after the game. Said you can't do that. You can't make that mistake. You got to give your chance, your team a chance to win. And the same goes for Nico. You have to be aware of the situation. And even if you didn't realize that there was no time on the clock, it was fourth down. It was do or die. You had to make a play. You were nowhere near the first down marker, and you walk out of bounds. Now, I think I saw that post game. he said that the ball was slipping out of his hands. He knew there was nothing he could do. Maybe that's the case. Maybe that's not. But you got to try to make a play there, and he did. Again, it wasn't all bad. I thought Dylan Sampson looked good running the football. James Pierce, we finally saw him come out. So now what's more important, the stats? We can talk about James Pierce and his stats. He had nine tackles, a sack, two two TFLs. He had a pass breakup. Are we celebrating that? Is that the kind of day we want James Pierce to have and then then lose the game? That's why stats don't matter. It's all about surviving, winning, and advancing, and Tennessee didn't get that done last night. And I think a lot of it is due to conservative play calling. Coach Heibel is not coaching – on edge. He's not coaching with that chip on his shoulder. He is not being aggressive. He's electing to punt the punt the ball. You know, once you get across the 50, Josh Heibel, nine times out of 10, if it's fourth and short, he's going to go for it. He doesn't have that cutthroat mentality anymore. Put your foot on their throat. That's what Nico said. We got to learn to put our foot on their throat. I don't think this team is doing that. I think they're coaching scared. I think they're coaching not to lose. And what does that do? It ends up getting you beat. I want to play a clip from the post game because I think it's important. And yes, it's coach speak. It's cliche. How do you respond? How does this football team respond? Because your back's against the wall now. And we talked about this last night. What does this mean for the season? How do you feel now? Are your predictions changing? I had a hard time picking this season because I said, you know, when you look at it game by game by game, I felt like if you beat Oklahoma, man, you're not losing till Georgia. But if you lose to Oklahoma, I said I could see 10 and 2. I could even see 9 and 3. Now Arkansas becomes Oklahoma. You dropped it. So again, is 10 and 2 still on the table? Yeah, but you're going to have to beat Florida when they come to town next week. You're going to have to beat Alabama. And then 10 and 2 is still possible. 
But you slip up the next two weeks, now you're looking at nine and three, maybe worse. Some of you guys are saying that the, the season's over. We're going seven and five. Boogie, they're terrible. You lied to us. You lied to us. You told us they were good and they're terrible. How does this team respond? Because right now, Texas is the only team in the SEC with, without a loss. So you still have everything in front of you. All of your goals are still intact. You still have a shot at an SEC championship. You still have a shot at a national championship. You've got a lot to figure out. But now Dylan Sampson post game. listen to this quote. It, this concerns me. We talked about coming off of a bye week and Josh Eibel's record coming off of a bye week. 3-0 and at Tennessee, 7-1 and all time. He's going to be prepared. He's going to be ready. But this team came out and they looked flat. And let's hear from a leader of this football team after the loss. Yeah, I, I think we've seen a time where we can't count anybody out. You know what I'm saying? This league is very competitive. But just you, you got to find a way to just bring everybody close. You can't pe let people start, um, you know, um, pulling away from each other. You go back and look at, you know, probably some of our actions. Probably we were a little lackadaisical um, with that bye week, you know, taking taking things for granted, you know. So, I mean, I, I told my team already in the locker room, it's just, you know, we, we can't take those things for granted. We can't just flip a switch on. So, you know what I'm saying? we Every time we go out there on the practice field, in the meeting room, we got to have great attention to detail. Lackadaisical. Took things for granted. Now, is that is that my fault? Is that my fault for coming on here and saying this is a good football team? I still think they're a good football team, by the way. Rat poison, trap games. No, that's on Josh Heupel, and that's on this football team. It's 2024. It doesn't matter who's talking. There's always going to be noise when you're having success. National media, local media, YouTube, social media. It's 2024. Now this team is going to, going to face a different type of noise. There's going to be some hate. Don't go on Twitter and tag players. Don't be a don't be a clown. Don't go on Twitter and tag players saying how terrible they are. I get it. They get paid. So what? How does this team respond? You know, Nick Saban said on game day after Kirby Smart, after Georgia lost to Alabama, said he texted Kirby Smart talking about one of his Alabama teams and how one of the best things to happen was to lose the game because it dialed him back in. It got him focused. Is that the case with this Tennessee team or is the sky falling? We're going to talk about it all tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Time Fan Call-In Show. Hope you guys will join us for that. Monday morning, Eric Kane will be back in the house at 9 a.m. for the morning show. Uh, we're going to play some EA Sports College football on Tuesday night. We'll talk about it then. And then Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Talking Vols Live. Look, Coach Speak, right? This team has got today to sulk and get over it, and then they're going to flush it, and then they got to focus on the Gators on Monday morning in the film room on the practice field. We'll see how they respond. The season is not over. Do me a favor, smash the thumbs up on the way out the door. Go check out the Talking Balls merchandise, bonfire.com slash store slash Talking Balls. We appreciate the support. Also, shout out to all the members of the channel. If you're not a member, you want to support what we do. You like the content, the live streams, the videos, think about hitting that join button. You can do it for just a dollar per month. If not, you don't have to do anything. Hit the thumbs up, jump in the comment section. Let's talk about it because this is the Talking Balls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. Go Big Orange.